A student gives a shopping cart a big push on a flat, rough surface. Underline the word rough. I think that's code for saying, Curtis, we better include friction. This is not ice. Okay. Which of the following is the best force or free body diagram for the cart after the student has released it? You know, I think we're going to vote again. I don't have a shopping cart here. I don't have a rough surface here. But this will be the same physics. If I, Sorry for those of you watching on YouTube. If I take my nice office chair and I give it a push, we're talking about the free body diagram right then, but not after it's come to a stop. So just after it's left my hand while it's still rolling. Which is the best free body diagram? A, B, C, or D? Oh, and the direction of motion looks like from the arrow to the right. Who says this is easy, Mr. Duke? Gotta be A, Mr. Duke, A, A, one, Two, three, four, four, three, four, three, four. Who says it's obviously B, Mr. Duke? Because you've got to be B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Who says C? Is that a hand up, Scott? No, that was just a okay. Who says D? One, two, three. Convince me. Um, you can either attack or defend. I would probably start out maybe by arguing which ones must be wrong. Which ones must be wrong? Why must C be wrong? So if C was the correct, it would, how would that object move if C was the correct free body diagram? It would, it could either stay at rest or, uh, I think forces are balanced vertically. Let's assume all the forces are balanced, which means A would be, it would keep going at a constant speed. Okay? That, this might be on perfect ice, but this can't possibly be right for the cart because its speed was changing. In fact, was it speeding up or slowing down? So which way was it accelerating, to the left or to the right in this picture here? If the motion is in that direction, which way was the cart accelerating if it was slowing down, to the left or to the right? Loud and proud. When I say loud and proud and you go quieter, that helps me nothing at all. Usually when I say loud and proud, it's because I've read your lips and I know you're right and I want you to get the glory. So let's try that again. Loud and proud to the left. Why must D be wrong then? Which way would D be accelerating? Got it? Oh, why must B be wrong then? If those are all the same length, which way is B accelerating if the forces are all balanced? It's not. Or if that arrow looks a tiny bit longer, it's speeding up. But I'm telling you, that can't be right. So the four of you that saw that, well done. It has to be A. How did we figure that out? Which of Newton's laws did I use? Now, if you don't remember which law we used, you could say accelerating to left, so A, because that's the only picture that lets you, ex by the way, remember accelerating, Curtis, means slowing down or speeding up, I don't care. When I say accelerate, I just mean it's changing its velocity. In which direction? To the left, because that's the way it's slowing down. Or you could have simply said first and drop the mic and walk up, because I think that's what we used. We said all of the other ones would either be speeding up or going at a constant speed, because we looked at the unbalanced forces. I'm going to say, and this is a gentle rebuke, I thought more than four of you would go with A. I'm a little, okay. Are you, by the way, are you starting to see, Amy, why free body diagrams are so helpful and Newton's first really couldn't bail with? Okay. Example six. A force of 12 newtons is required to keep a mass accelerating at 0.8 meters per second squared. What is the coefficient of friction between the mass and the floor? So this question is asking me to find the coefficient of friction. Is it asking me to find, Sky, the force of friction? Hey, no, it's asking, you know what it's asking me to find? Hey, what's mu? I don't know what's mu with you. It's asking me to find mu. Okay.
Allie, you know what this is a good job for? What? Did they give me a picture? I'm going to actually just label the picture and whip, rather than doing it separately. What are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious one. What else? Is it sinking into the ground like quicksand? <coughs> is it flying into the air like Superman? So there must be a normal force up, and I'm pretty sure the normal force is the same size as mg. That's going to be changing in lesson six, by the way. In the next lesson, I'm going to have forces, extra forces up and down. So don't always think, oh, normal force will be mg. Only if I really keep it simple, stupid, okay? What else? Well, there's this 12. What name did we decide last class that we were going to give to the mystery force from off the page? I said you could pretend little visible leprechauns or something like that. Remember what we called it? You know, so I'm going to say F, and I'll put a little app. The F is already there. The applied force. Is there friction? What are they asking me to find? So is there friction? Got to be. Otherwise, you would be zero because it would be ice, perfect ice. By the way, typically if I'm talking about ice in a question, you can assume I'm pretending the ice is perfect ice with no friction. I know in real life, technically, you can come to a stop on ice. It just takes way, way, way longer. So mu isn't quite zero on ice. Uh, which way am I going to point friction? Left, bigger, smaller, or the same size as that 12? How, why must it be smaller? Because it says I'm still accelerating. Barely, they're almost the same size. But I'm going to exaggerate it so it catches my eye. So I'm going to go, yunk, friction. But I'm going to realize with such a small acceleration that if I calculate the force of friction, it's going to be nearly the same size. Have we missed any forces? I don't think so. So now what's our next step? We want to generate our force equation. We said we use a tug of war approach. There's technically two equations. There's a vertical equation, Karn. I think normal force equals mg. And there's a horizontal force equation. I'm pretty sure I want the horizontal force equation because I think the thing that I'm looking for is hidden inside that. So who's winning? If applied, who's losing? What does winner minus loser always equal? MA. Sky, is this question asking me to find the force of friction? Right, no. It's asking me to find the coefficient of friction. What's the symbol? What's the Greek letter for the coefficient of friction? Oh, hey folks, everybody, friction is what times what? Everybody. Friction is what times what? Sesame Street has brought you to work today, Taylor, by the word everybody. You're the one who I'm looking at whose lips aren't moving. So everybody, friction is what times what? Mu times the normal force. So my next step, I would drop the F applied down. And I would smile because I would say they wanted me to find mu. There it is. It's showed up now in my equation. I want to get the mu by itself. What's right in front of the mu that I don't like? <gasps> Swappy dance! Why not? I'm going to plus this whole thing there and minus this whole thing there. I'm going to get F applied minus MA equals mu FM. You okay with that, Karn? Swappy dance time. Sky, what am I trying to find? Hey, what's mu? I don't know what's me with you. Um, oh, I guess I want to move the fn over. What's the fn doing to the mu? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So, are you starting to notice that some of the math that we've been doing is becoming repetitive? Different variables, but we've done that divide thing before. Oh, problem. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know the force the same size as the normal force. Which one? Mg. So I can say this. Mu is going to be F applied minus Ma over Mg. Curtis, don't bother memorizing that. Yes, that's a, yet another equation. We're not going to add all these to our green sheet. I'm teaching you how to derive them. 
which hopefully by now I've convinced you is a much better way to do this. It's harder. No, don't kid yourself. It, I could just give you every equation, turn it to plug and chug and walk away. But I think this is really forcing you to wrap your understanding around what's going on. Uh, how big was the applied force as a number exactly? Minus M. Five. A. I've scrolled down. What was A? 0.8 all over 5 times 9.8. Wes, is this a fraction? Is there more than one thing on the top? Brackets. Ooh, is there more than one thing on the bottom? Also brackets. I would strongly encourage all of you to try typing this out. I'm just making a... Yeah, let me think here. I was trying to do it in my head. No, I got nothing. I know it's going to be less than one. Point 0.1, give it to me a three sig figs. Round it off properly on the third sig fig, please. So point 0.1, what, what? Point 0.163? Units. Is it a force? Is it a force? Did we find the force of friction? Sky, did we find the force of friction? So is it Newton's? No. Mu, no units. It's just a ratio. How sticky is it? About 0.163. No units. Okay. Homework you're now capable of doing. I already gave you number one, number two, number three. You can now try number four. I would probably do quick sketches or free body diagrams for number four. You can now try number five. Number five is asking you to find mu like we just did. If the acceleration is zero, that would mean the forces are balanced. If the acceleration is 1.5 and it's speeding up, and if the acceleration is 2.2 but it's slowing down. If we're slowing down, if we're slowing down, which force would be winning up here? M. Friction. In your free body diagram, the friction arrow will be bigger if we're slowing down. This is what happens, by the way, when you're braking on your bike or hitting the brakes. You're increasing the force of friction. You're still moving forwards, but you're slowing down. Okay? So you can certainly do that question. Number six is tricky. It's so easy that it's tough. Number seven is tricky. It's so easy that it's tough. I would encourage you both for number six and number seven to draw a good free body diagram. Number eight is good. Nine is good. Mr. Duick, why don't you just say every question? Okay, fine, every question. Put your pencils down, look up. We looked at friction climbing, which is a really neat application of friction. Uh, please don't try it yourself unless you're a trained expert, though, because things can go horribly wrong. More friction examples. Example one, I'd like you to consider the bench below, which is being pushed by student number one across a rough surface at a constant speed. You know what, Jana? I would probably underline that. Hopefully you're cluing in as one of our ding, ding, ding. It tells us a lot. You know what? Let's imagine, you've all seen those wooden benches in the gym. How many of you ever slid one of those wooden benches, those PE benches across the floor? That's what we're doing. So Wes, you're push, you know what? You're pushing it across the floor, okay, at a constant speed. Then Karn pushes down on the bench. He comes and he sits on it because, you know, Karn would with a force F. If you don't change how hard you push, if Wes continues his constant applied force, what happens to A, the weight? B, the normal force, C, friction, and D, motion of the bench. So here's our before and after. Here I've done the complete free body diagram. We have gravity down. It's the same size as normal force up. We have applied force and friction. They must be the same because constant speed. When Karin comes and sits here, does mg of the bench change? Does the mass of the actual bench itself change? 
So do me a favor, if you'd be so kind, put the MG back there again. Is the bench sinking to the ground like quicksand? Is it flying to you like Superman? No? Look up. Don't write this down. Why would I take marks off if you said, oh, well, the normal force must be the same size as mg? Why is that impossible? The normal force has to cancel out both of these, so I'm really going to exaggerate it. Yeah. Taylor, friction is what times what? So if the normal force just got bigger, what happened to the friction force? It just got... I'll exaggerate it. And so I think now we can answer the questions. A, what happened to the weight? What's another expression for weight? When I say weight, no now, what force do I mean? You can give it to me as two letters if you want to. I'm talking mg, right? Gravity, mg, same, okay? Did the weight of the bench change? What happened to the normal force when Karn came and sat on the bench? I don't want to write got bigger. Here's, I may have showed you this abbreviation before. I can't remember. I'm going to write FN, and then my abbreviation for increased is an arrow pointing up. And now you probably also know my abbreviation for decreased. It's an arrow pointing down. So what happened to the force of friction? Taylor, friction is what times what? So if Fn gets bigger, then? Yeah. Or we could have influenced mu, but this question didn't mention that at all. That's what uh, in the video that we saw why he was spraying sticky stuff on his hands to increase friction as well. So friction increased. So... Looking at this free body diagram then, how will this object move? Which way must it accelerate? To the? And since it was moving to the right and it's accelerating to the left, will it speed up or slow down? That's what's slowing down. And by the way, it would slow down and then probably come to a stop really quick as well. So we're talking about the split second after idiot Karn lands, I mean, after Karn lands on the bench. Okay? Sorry, that was mean of me. But I saw your eyes light up when I said sit on the bench and I saw you kind of, oh yeah, I totally would. So you agree with me? Slows down and then eventually it's going to stop. But we're talking about right after it says, explain your answer using principles of physics. I think we did with our free body diagram and this. I would totally accept that if I gave this to you as a question on a test, as a thought question. I would totally accept that. In physics 12, on every test, they get a using principles of physics right to explain question like this. I force them to prove something or convince me of something. I put a few of them in physics 11, but I really put a lot of them in the homework to get you ready for physics 12. We want to explain something else. I'm going to pause the video for a second. There's technically two different types of coefficients of friction. One is called static friction. That's when the object is at rest. And that mu is usually a little bit bigger than the mu once you get it moving. Once you get it moving, the mu is called kinetic friction. Hey, we got a thought puzzle here, and we have choices. I think once again, we get to vote. Once again, how high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. Sorry to those of you at YouTube. I'm keeping the recording going. Here's what it says. Suppose I pull on this desk with two Newtons, and the desk does not move. So I'm pulling with two Newtons. The desk does not move. Which of the following statements is true? A, static friction is bigger than two Newtons. B, static friction is exactly two Newtons. C, static friction is less than two Newtons. Or D, there is no static friction. So again, the argument is, I'm coupled with two Newtons. The desk is not moving. Which of those statements must be correct? Oh, we get to vote. OK, here we go. Who says, A, Mr. Duke, static friction has to be bigger than two newtons because it's not moving? A, static friction is clearly bigger. Allie, you go with it. You can if you want to. I saw your hand start to move, and then you looked around. No, not going with it. Okay, huh. Who says, B, static friction is exactly two newtons? B, one, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Lots of you. Okay, I'm just going to go with lots. I love the way Elias did it. He also turned it into a casual stretch. That was, that was, that was nice. Uh, C, static friction is less than two newtons. It has to be less than two. Less. Got one? That's no static friction at all. Huh. Why must D be wrong? You know what this is a good job for? In our heads, if I'm applying a force of two newtons to the front of the class and there's no friction, would I have an unbalanced force pointing to the front of the class? Which way must the desk accelerate then? Towards the front of the class. Did it? Oh, why must C, sorry, be wrong? If I'm applying a force of two newtons this way, and let's say friction is 1.9 newtons that way, are the forces balanced? So which way must that desk still accelerate? Towards the front of the class. Why is A wrong? If I'm applying a force of two newtons this way, but friction is six newtons that way, it would be strange. It would almost be like I could tug on something, let it go, and it would shoot back at you guys and knock you over like it was on a rubber band or something like that. What's the correct answer? How did we prove it? Using forces. Uh, we used some physics. More specific. So, since no one came up with it, we will write A equals zero, so forces are balanced. I would have just written Newton's first, drop the mic, and walk off. But since nobody said that, you have to write the longer version. <clears throat> so there. Static friction, the friction of an object at rest that prevents you from getting it moving. By the way, we call it static. Static means unchanging or not moving. I should have mentioned up here. We call it static friction since the word static means not moving, not changing. Things are static. Static friction is only as big as it needs to be. Let's suppose that this desk can create a maximum static friction of 20 newtons. I'm pulling with 15 newtons right now. How big must static friction be? Now be 15. Even though it can be 20, it's just going to match me. Now I'm pulling a little harder with 17 newtons. How big must friction be? Okay. Now, what if I pull with 20 newtons? This desk is almost ready to go. I can feel it. That's just about ready to go, but static friction is matching me. And as soon as I go to 20.1 newtons, now I've overcome static friction. And it gets easier because now that it's moving, the friction just changed. It's no longer 20. It got smaller. This is why I told you friction. It's kind of complicated. There's a lot going on there. But you experience it all the time, so I want you to get familiar with it. So I wrote here, static friction acts when you have two objects that rest relative to each other. They haven't started moving yet. It's what keeps a car with its parking brakes from sliding down a hill. Uh, in fact, a block of wood can remain stationary on a slope table. You can in increase the incline, and the block will stay there for a while. If you go near vertical, the block's going to slide, but static friction is what's holding it in place. The force to overcome static friction is always greater, at least a little bit greater, than the force needed to overcome sliding friction. Now, sliding friction is also called kinetic friction. <coughs> We're not sure why. I told you there's still some stuff with friction that we're uncertain about. We think... It's because, remember I said that your desks are actually microscopic hills and valleys if you zoom in? We think it's because those microscopic hills and valleys have kind of settled into each other, and first you've kind of got to break that connection. How many of you have ever been on a gravel road that was full of potholes, and you were going really slow, and you felt every single pothole, so the driver started to go just a little bit faster and you found actually your ride smoothed out because your tires weren't dropping all the way down into the pothole. They were skipping across and just catching the far end. That's, we think, 
kind of sort of like what's going on here, Quinn. Once you get it moving, we think those microscopic hills and valleys just don't have time to completely connect with each other. But we can't take photos that small. We're, we're not sure yet. At least I haven't checked lately. Maybe we've published a paper and we've come to a consensus. So that's why I said presumably, we think. So technically, in the homework for a couple of questions, I'm going to give you two mu's. A mu s, which is a short for mu static, you'll use that when the object is at rest. Taylor friction is what times what? If it's at rest, you'll use that mu. And I'll give you a mu k. That's the mu that you'll use when the object is moving. So if we really wanted to be accurate, we could say something like this. And I'm going to finish, I think, with this, yeah, here. We'll do example four next class. Next class, we're going to start to muck around with a different normal force you may notice here. But let's finish with this question, and that way you can work on lesson five. A five kilogram object sits on a surface with mu static of 0.3 and mu kin kinetic of 0.25. The kinetic is a bit smaller, which is why it's easier to slide something once you get it moving. It says determine the force to move, required to move the object. You know what, this, yeah, let's try that again. You know what this might be a good job for? Let's represent the object with a dot right there. Because I got room. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Which way? And Kyla, I'm pretty sure a normal force pointing up, same size as mg. We want the force required to move the object, so we would like to find F applied. That's what I'm going to, in my equation, try and figure out. But right now, it's at rest, so I'm going to draw friction the same size as F applied. And I'm going to pretend that we've started to tug harder and harder and harder, and we can feel through our hand that it's just about to move. We've got exactly, we've maxed out friction. Is that okay, Amy? Who's winning? Well, we're not moving yet. So what's my acceleration exactly as a number? So the forces are, I'm looking for a word that begins with letter. So you could argue for part A, it's a tie, that the applied force is exactly the same size as friction. Taylor, friction is what times what? So I'm going to draw a little arrow, and I'm going to say the applied force is going to be the same size as mu times the normal force. Have we started moving yet, Taylor? So it's going to be the static, not moving coefficient of friction. I'm going to put the 0.3 there, not the 0.25 there. I don't know the normal force. <gasps> oh, but look, 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 look. I know the force the same size as the normal force. Which one? Mg. So I can say this. For me to get this moving, I have to pull harder than this. It's going to be mu static mg. It's going to be 0.3 times 5, times 9.8. If I do that one in my head, it's going to be 49 times 0.3. Well, 50 times 0.3 would be 15. So for 14.7? Uh, Double check me. No? Yeah? So really, technically, 14.7 wouldn't quite get this moving. 14.7000000001, now it would start to move because I've overcome friction and the forces would no longer be balanced. The biggest friction can be is 14.7. By the way, well, B says, what if I pull with 10 newtons? If I pull with 10 newtons, what's the acceleration exactly as a number? How big is the force of friction exactly as a number? Don't say 14.7. How big must friction be? 10. Because it's not accelerating. C. Am I, how hard am I pulling in part C? Is that enough to get it to accelerate? Oh, but now that it's started to move, I'm going to use mu kinetic. So I'm going to go to my free body diagram, except in this case, we are accelerating. So I'm not going to redraw it. I'm going to imagine it. Emma, who's winning? 
who's losing equals ma. There is an acceleration. So my equation is going to be F applied minus friction equals ma. They want me to find a emma. I'm going to divide by m. Huh? See how I did that? Wasn't it? Huh? No? No? That joke's been sitting there all year, Mr. Duick. How did you only spot it right now? Note to self, flog that one to death because it's so bad, it's good. So A is going to be F applied is 20 minus mu times the normal force all over M. A is going to be 20 minus, which mu am I going to use? The 0.25, yeah. So up here, let's put a little K in our equations so that we remind ourselves, Jack, that's what we did. And uh, I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. Which force is the same size as the normal force in this diagram? So you know what, folks? If you want to up here where it says Fn, you can just draw an arrow and say, I'm going to replace that with Mg. And that way we don't need to rewrite everything. We can go straight to plugging in numbers. What was mu K? I've scrolled down. times 5, times 9.8, all over 5. Hear that one in your head, Mr. Well, maybe. It's going to be 49 times 0.25. Uh, 50 times 0.25 would be 12.5. So it's going to be 12.25. It's going to be 20. Take away 12, 8. Uh, it, ooh. Uh, 1.5 times 12. something. I, I'm off. I could be way off. I lost a decimal somewhere in there. What'd you get? 1.55? I went up instead of down. Yeah! 1.55 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration. Part C also wanted me to find the force of friction. Okay, the force of friction is going to be mu k times the normal force. In fact, I've got it sitting right here. It's going to be 0.25 times 5, times 9.8. That I can do in my head. It's 12.25, I think. Or am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. No? Yeah? I'll go 12.3 to 3 sig figs just for giggles, but I did it to 4 sig figs in my head. Okay. So... We're going to finish with this. To keep the math nice, Curtis, on a quiz or a test, I'm just going to give you one mu. I think there's one question in the homework where I give you a static and a kinetic, but we're just going to treat both types of friction as the same thing. So friction is going to be mu times the normal force. Where mu equals the coefficient of friction and the normal force equals get it from a free body diagram. Don't ever let yourself think, oh, friction equals mu mg because I'm telling you next lesson I'm changing the normal force. It's not going to be mg. We'll have to figure it out, but we always can from the free body diagram. That's why I didn't give you an equation for a normal force on your sheet. You can't. So we're going to pause here.